Okay, so uh, we're in the standard form. I've got three dots here. You need to think this through. And y is then the integrating factor e to the negative rt. And how does that then give you this? And then what do you do with this? Okay, well, what you do with this is you integrate both sides. And the prime is, of course, with respect to your independent variable, which is t. And then we have this integral on the right-hand side, which gives you p e to the negative rt equals whatever you get when you integrate here. And of course, uh, when you do this integral, you get a plus a constant. Now I'll just comment that you do this integral by using integration by parts. You're going to do it twice um, because of the cosine. Um, and you're going to get a result, okay? And of course you go to an integration table and see if you did it right. But of course you take the derivative, really the best way to see if you did it right because it gives you more insight take the derivative and see if you get back to this. Okay, so you get this. So, your function then becomes just P equals <coughs> this integral, whatever you get from the integral, plus C over E to the negative RT. And then, okay, and those are steps that you need to be able to fill in. And then step back and look at the broad sweep of the problem. Yeah, again, pretty straightforward. Your book will have examples of this too. Pretty straightforward once you recognize that this is a first order linear non homogeneous equation. You don't always, when you have a first order linear equation, you don't always get an integral function over here. A function that you can integrate and write the result in closed form. Okay, in this case you do. And a whole range of functions that you can integrate with e to the negative r2, with an exponential. But there are a lot more that you can't, in which case you have to go to approximations.